Hello, my name is Katherine Hampton and I love stories. I love reading them, writing them, listening to them, and telling them. I grew up as a librarian's daughter and it was my mom who introduced me to the wonder of books and libraries and the magical places that a well-told story can take you. I followed in her footsteps. I became an elementary school librarian in Santa Cruz County. It was in that quiet, magical room that housed our school's books that I introduced my young students to all sorts of storytelling and read-alouds. It became clear to me that the stories that were told through a young person's eyes and voice were fascinating. They spoke of a simplicity, a purity, an endearing honesty that could open one's heart and expand one's understanding and compassion of the world at large. I became inspired to try my hand at writing and telling stories through a young person's point of view, to reimagine a concept, a topic, a slice of history, through the eyes and sensibility of a child, and then to use that language to tell a tale. It was at an experimental theater workshop presentation that I came across my second compelling inspiration, or muse, if you will. Forty years ago, a friend and colleague took me to see a two-person scene at a rehearsal space in downtown San Diego. One of the actors was an older woman. She had long gray-white hair, was wearing burgundy corduroy pants and an off-white top, and seemed like she must have been about 60. When she began speaking her lines, though, she was six years old. Her transformation and her subsequent telling of her story as a six-year-old child left an unforgettable, indelible mark on me and helped me to realize that I, as an adult, could inhabit a child's world and share it in a way that could be powerful, entertaining, and uniquely true. And so these two muse-like inspirations helped me to write this story, which I would like to share with you now. Bus Ride. It was just like any other Thursday, riding the bus home after school in my piano lesson. I remember it was getting pretty cold. Christmas was coming and the big department store, Montgomery Fair, was all lit up and twinkling. There were lots of people riding the bus that evening. I was sitting near the front, like I always did. A few stops after mine, a lady got on the bus. As she walked past my seat, she smiled at me. She was pretty. I smiled back. She seemed like a nice lady, real calm and peaceful-like. I watched as she sat down behind me and closed her eyes like she was tired. At the next stop, some more people got on the bus. They all sat down, except for one man who couldn't find a seat near the front. Then the bus driver told the nice lady to get up and let him have her seat. Well, she opened her eyes and looked at him, but she never moved. Then the bus driver got kind of mean and said, y'all make it light on yourself and let him have that seat. The nice lady just kept sitting there, real peaceful like, not saying anything. Then the bus driver shouted, if you don't get up and let him have that seat, I'm gonna call the police and have you arrested. As peaceful as could be, the nice lady said, you may do that. Soon after that, two policemen got on the bus and went to where the nice lady was sitting and said, why don't you stand up? As peaceful as could be, the nice lady said, I don't think I should have to. And then she asked them a question. Why do you push us around? They told her the law was the law and that they were arresting her. And so they took the nice lady off the bus right then and there. After that, the people
people on the bus got pretty quiet. I was glad when my stop came and I could get off the bus. I wasn't feeling very good. When I got home, I told my mom and dad what had happened on the bus. They looked sad. And then they switched on the television set to the news. They were showing the nice lady being put in jail downtown. They said her name was Rosa, Rosa Parks. I didn't understand why they put such a nice lady who smiled at me so pretty in jail. Maybe it was because she was a Negro and the man who couldn't find a seat was a white person. But that didn't seem like any kind of reason. That night, when I went to bed and said my prayers, I asked the angels to watch over the nice lady, Rosa, in jail. I knew they would, because they'd answered my prayer about getting piano lessons. Thank you.